I don't think any of us can really fathom or truly understand, really appreciate the coaching job that Bill O'Brien did at Penn State last season. Mark Rogers TV on Penn State Football 2013, but before we get to this fall, let's look back at the job O'Brien did. Wow. We know that the acts were unspeakable and unthinkable, and O'Brien comes in from the NFL's New England Patriots, and he's got to pick up all the pieces. So first of all, he's got to recruit his own football team to stay. So these guys were free to go anywhere and play college football and play in postseason and play with a positive feel. This program had a huge black mark on it from the media, from the public, all the scrutiny, all the attention off the field that, again, you all know about and there's no way can, we can really describe. Okay, he had to fight through that and keep his players, even though he had to say you can't play in a bowl game at Penn State for your entire career. You're not going to be able to play postseason play at Penn State. Stay here, though. Stay here and let's fight through it. So, first of all, he had to sell his team. And sure, there were guys who walked away, but for the most part, he kept his good players. And then... He had to keep up morale. Again, when everybody's asking all the questions about what happened at Penn State, he had to keep up the morale and focus on football. Then he implemented a very complicated offensive system. And this was a Penn State offense that was deplorable its last couple of years under Joe Paterno. Very pedestrian, relied on the defense and the special teams to win games and be a bowl caliber seven or eight win football team the last couple of years under Paterno. And he brings in this complicated offense and he wins football games. He makes Matt McGloin look like, well, something close to Tom Brady or something not so close to Tom Brady, but very good. The best passer in the Big Ten. Forget Braxton Miller or Taylor Martinez as complete quarterbacks. As a passer, Matt McGloin was the best QB in the Big Ten last season because of Bill O'Brien's coaching and because of the schemes and the matchups. But it's a complicated offense, and he didn't have his players at all. And he brings in this offense, and he clicks. Penn State had a good-looking offense last season. It was very productive, the number one passing offense in the Big Ten. So then on top of that, he loses the first two games. So even though you get a team inspired and ready to, to sell the mantra, us against the world, then you come out of the gate at home and lose to a max school. Then you go on the road and lose because you missed four field goals, including what would have been the game winner against Virginia and lose 17-16. So you start off 0-2, and then you really have nothing to play for. But Bill O'Brien sold it, and he finished 8-2, 6-2 in the Big Ten. And Penn State was a solid football team and got uh, really blown out by nobody. They were in every football game, and even against Ohio State, one of the top five teams in college football. Okay, so then Bill O'Brien goes out and he recruits, and again, with a three-year postseason ban now, still recruits a top 25 recruiting class. But still, the fight is not over, and maybe the worst is yet to come for Penn State. Some prognosticators were predicting this program to be down for 10 years. Well, O'Brien pretty much proved that he can turn it around very soon. But the scholarship reductions are really going to hurt in this second and third year of the four year postseason ban. He's down to 66 scholarships, and it really hurts starting a quarterback. We're going to run through all the positions, but you're going to see at every position where Penn State's got football players and top-rate, top 25 football players, but they have one or two at each position. They don't have depth. So we start a quarterback, and keep in mind that no quarterback on the roster has thrown a pass at this level. You've got Christian Hackenberg, the number one or two rated pocket passer coming out of high school, and so he's the guy. He's the guy for the future. But he's going to have to fend off Tyler Ferguson, a junior college transfer, who was able to work with the team in the spring, work with the team minus the coaches during the summer and now into the fall. So he knows the offense. Hackenberg is the prototype pocket passer, though, that can make all the NFL throws. So I think Penn State fans obviously want Hackenberg to be the guy, but Ferguson might be the better choice right now. O'Brien has said that he wants a starting quarterback in place with 15 practices or about two weeks to the opener. But he said he's not going to make a decision until he really knows that somebody has separated themselves, but he would like to know with two weeks to play. Okay, so that's the situation there at quarterback. Nobody is throwing a pass at this level. It's either Hackenberg or Ferguson. 
and they're going to feel some pain, some growing pains with this offense with a rookie at quarterback. Okay, then we've got the running back situation where Zach Zwinnick turned out to be a find, and he was a godsend because he was back on the depth chart. There were some injuries that thrust him into the starting role. He ran for 1,000 yards, 4.9 yards per carry, and six touchdowns. Uh, he's backed up by um, at uh, running back by Bill Benton, who ran for 258 and three touchdowns. But after that, no experience at running back. Too deep at running back. And so again, very thin. Zwinnick's good. He's not elite. He's not explosive. He's a tough runner. He's a smart runner. Knows his blocking schemes and can follow blocks and, and pick up the right yardage and move the chains. But he's not dynamic. But he's got to stay healthy because it's Benton and it's Zwinnick. And that's the running game for Penn State. And this is going to be a theme when we talk about Penn State football at each position. Offensive line, Donovan Smith at left tackle. Very talented player. Uh, with uh, nine career starts. You've got um, John Urschel, who we heard at the Big Ten preseason banquet. Very eloquent, very intelligent guy who plays guard and is uh, basically considered one of the top 25 overall players in the Big Ten. He's coming back. But the rest of the guys, uh, you got some, some other starters coming back along the offensive line. They do have 36 career starts coming back, but they lose six of their 10 on the two-deep chart going back to last season. So six of the top 10 gone along the offensive line. At a wide receiver, maybe the most dynamic player in the Big Ten's back in Allen Robinson. And if you saw my uh, preview of the top 10 wide receivers in the nation coming back into 2013, I made a huge mistake in leaving out Allen Robinson. My bad, I missed it. Allen Robinson caught 77 for 10 for 1,013 yards and 11 touchdowns last season. He won the Triple Crown for receivers in the Big Ten. And Hackenberg and Ferguson, if they get in trouble, can just toss it up in the air for this guy. He's a dynamic playmaker. You also have a wide receiver, Brandon Mosby Felder, who caught 31 for 437. They're actually pretty deep at tight end. They've got several tight ends who can make plays and who are strong blockers and uh, highly recruited players. But they're led by Kyle Carter, who last season caught 36 for 453. So they've got experience coming back at all the skill positions running back, tight end, and wide receiver. But again, they're thin, and especially along the offensive line. So the theme number two would be versatility, especially at the linebacking positions and in the secondary and along the offensive front. Guys are going to have to play multiple positions because when injuries do happen, versatility for this football team is going to be huge in making up for that, that uh, thin layer of talent because they've got top 25 talent on the first team, and then it depletes much, much after that. Defensive end, Deion Barnes is a freshman. Six sacks, 10 tackles for loss. He's a playmaker. Then at linebacker, again, they've got two or three really good players, but they're very thin. You've got uh, Neam Wartman, a uh, redshirt freshman, so he has not played, but he's a top recruit. And then they've got the two starters coming back in uh, Glenn Carson and Mike Hall. But then after that, it's, been, it's so thin at linebacker that they're talking about playing possibly a 4-2-5 to uh, maximize the, the depth that they have at secondary. Uh, Bill O'Brien says that this, this team is much more athletic and better conditioned than at this time last year. And it really shows up in the secondary with Adrian Amos, who picked off two passes and had two and a half tackles for loss. Uh, Malcolm Willis with 36 tackles and Stephen uh, Beng at Young Pung who had 31 tackles. So they've got three defensive backs who played a ton last season. Okay, that's, that's pretty much the deal here, is that it's amazing that despite all those losses and that situation, that actually Bill O'Brien improved this football team. They're a top 25 team. They've got a kicker in Sam Ficken, who comes back after making 14 of 21, but zero for four from plus 40. So he needs to strengthen the leg and make some kicks from distance. They've got a tough Big Ten schedule. They start off with a pretty difficult opener at home against Syracuse, but uh, Penn State looks to me like a 7-5 and five football team, and that would be a, a victory. Despite the decline in wins from 8-7, to seven, considering the scholarship reductions really hit home in year two, that would be another fine season for Penn State at 7-5. and five. Would love to hear what you have to say about the Nittany Lions right here on Mark Rogers TV and ProFootballCentral.com.